What's up my ninjas? I'm Strident and I'm back with another review. This time I am reviewing The Dark Knight Returns, the animated film. Not to be confused with, uh, what is it, The Dark Knight or Ri Dark Knight Rises or any of that stuff. <laughs> this is a whole different, uh, this is what spawned all that stuff. Um, so you guys might have seen the video I did uh, a few days ago when I told you, you know, midway through the movie, um, that it was a must-see. I think you guys gotta see it, it's worth it, it is awesome, it's everything that the Nolan trilogy was not, you know? And, uh, after finishing the movie, <laughs> I can only say, I can only repeat myself, it's everything that's been missing from Batman cinematically for the last what since 2005 you know outside of the animated films we've been going to the theaters to watch other people tell us that Batman doesn't have the imagination that uh, you know we all you know the imagination that drew us all in in the first place um, we've been watching people water down his villains water down the man's drive which was the one thing that made him do what he does watching his, uh, other people build all his gear for him and not watching him do it himself with the help of other people occasionally. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, you know, people have come to forget why we liked this character in the first place, you know? Why many people even love the character in the first place. Um, this movie reminds you. Now, um, Frank Miller wrote the original, uh, you know, story. And, uh, you know, there's been some tweaks here and there in this movie. And, you know, over the years, we've seen, uh, if you've seen Batman the Animated Series, you got to see a glimpse at what this would look like in animation. Although that version was pretty ugly in comparison to this, it was still good. And, you know, it mimicked Miller's style really well. The same goes for this. Only this is a beefed-up version of that you know in a complete film and even that it's it's been split into two parts which is kind of awesome it stops at the end of one of the arcs and then the bigger arc is going to be you know finished in the second which comes out i want to say this winter um but as the story goes for this one uh, for those of you who don't know um batman's retired and uh it's about, I think it's been 10 years since his last sighting. And uh, things have not been good for Gotham. It's like crime is ridiculous, you know? The new gangs, which are the mutants, they don't really explain to you where they came from, but it's this new group of people that are just vicious and, you know, somewhat inhuman, metahuman, you know what I mean? They, they almost remind me of something like a... Like a I don't want to say a killer croc light, but something along those lines. And uh, they're just violent, malicious criminals with no rhyme and reason for why they do what they do. And uh, the Gotham, uh, many people in Gotham have been calling them the worst criminals Gotham's ever seen since the Joker. Um, of course, you know, Bruce is just like, you, this can't be happening. You know, and he's, I guess over the years, he has repressed the side of his personality that is Batman, which, if you know Batman, that's him. That is his personality. He is Batman. Bruce Wayne is the shell. So he've, he's allowed the Bruce Wayne persona to be the dominating persona, and he has been drinking to kind of, uh, you know, help him repress the dominate the dominant uh, personality of Batman. Um, after a while of seeing all these things and having flashbacks and almost getting mugged and you know Commissioner Gordon on the you know the the brink of retirement and uh, seeing what he's going through and other things, Batman is forced <laughs> to pick back up his cowl, um, his cape and cowl. Now when Bats first shows up. Uh, the uh, public opinion is kind of split straight down the middle. The common people, you know, 
they're like, man, it's about time. We're so happy to see somebody doing something. Batman's actually, you know, taking back Gotham for, for the regular people. But then the rich and the powerful, they're all saying shit like, uh, you know, Batman's a fascist. Actually, I shouldn't even say the rich and the powerful. The yuppies and the rich and, like, some of the people who otherwise wouldn't give a damn about the, you know, the hood, <laughs> so to speak, you know? Um, they kind of, their opinions are divided. And um, you kind of get to see that the youth, it's pretty much like the youth believe they kind of believe they're leaning towards the, the might makes right type of way, you know, like someone needs to deal with these people a certain way, and it's the heavier hand in this case that would win the day. So, um, you know, this plays into the outcome of the story. Well, this portion of the story. During Batman's uh, first meeting with the, uh, the mutant leader, um, he pretty much this is where you see him have difficulty because this is the first straight up hand to hand fight that he's had in 10 years with someone who actually could be a match for him um, he uh, receives assistance in the form of Carrie Kelly female Robin who I remember when I was a kid a lot of my friends had issues with the fact that there was a girl Robin and they thought it was kind of lame and she just looked goofy but when you see her perform in this and fight and you know you see how she flips around and stuff she does the character justice in a way that it seems like Robin should have always been a female character for some reason you know and a lot of people have made jokes about Robin I have Tim Drake is my favorite Robin um there's so many reasons for it but I I think that Carrie Kelly is one of the better versions even better than Stephanie Brown who uh, many of you might know as a spoiler. Um, and then later on, she became Batgirl. Um, but uh, yeah, she, I think uh, Carrie Kelly does a better job of being a, a, a valid Robin because DC always tried to pretend like Stephanie Brown was not Robin, but she clearly was wearing a costume and running around with Batman. And, you know, she was handling things, so she was a Robin. But, uh, uh, Carrie Kelly does a good job. She's kind of goofy. She's kind of... She reminds me of Jubilee in some ways, you know? But she fits, and she works, and they did a really good job with that. Now, this uh, film does a good job of uh, kind of bringing the psychology of Batman to the forefront, which is something that the uh, you know Nolan trilogy was supposed to do, and I keep bringing it up just because of all the similarities. But uh, I find it super, uh, you know, I find it hilarious that a cartoon or an animated film based on a comic book that people's assumption is that these things are for kids would delve so deep in, uh, you know, giving you a glimpse at the psychosis that this character is, 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 is dealing with, you know, or the, or the trauma, actually, not psychosis, the trauma that this character is dealing with, psychological trauma. And, uh, you know, they always manage to put it somewhere in the front of your mind, you know, so you don't forget and you understand why this drives him to do what he does, you know, and a movie, three movies that were supposed to focus on this, you know, they only barely scratch the surface of the psychological trauma, you know, it doesn't make sense to me, but, you know, it's how it is, but pretty much... The way that it's it, uh, Batman is shown in this, it does drive home the point that Bruce is the shell and Batman is the dominant personality. He even says it. And uh, you know, I've mentioned before in one of my, my older videos that there's a book called Superheroes and Psychology. And they go over this and they go over some of the psychology, obviously, with other characters, too. And they explain to you which characters are actually... The costumed version and which characters you know which are more comfortable in costume and less comfortable in regular clothes you know what I'm saying um, Batman was the number one because he's probably the first one to kind of uh, give us an example of how a human being could work so hard to be a certain way and that certain way is who he truly was all this time so anyway once Bruce picks up his cape and cowl 
<laughs> he beats the shit out of everyone. You do get to see that he is a little older, a lot older actually, and it's not as easy as it was, but he will not allow this to slow him down. Um, what amazed me about this movie the most, I mean, it already was a good story. It's probably the best thing that Frank Miller wrote ever, period. You know, with, with Sin City coming in like maybe a close second. But this is easily the best thing. This is Miller's opus, you know. He explained he couldn't believe Batman was, uh, he was older than Batman. So he wanted to do a story where Batman was old as heck, you know. And he still showed you that the old timers can kick ass. And if you know me, you know I dig the old school heroes, you know. I dig movies like Expendables because I dug those old school heroes. They're the ones I grew up watching. I dig the fact that, you know, here's Batman in an underdog story. Typically, you got to think about it, especially in these days, Bats is not really an underdog. I mean, he's the goddamn Batman. Another, you know, famous line of Miller's. Pretty much, he doesn't lose, you know? In this, you actually get to see him get his ass whooped. And then you see him whoop ass a lot, you know what I mean? But it, this was the movie that kind of started to solidify that image in your head and, and that concept that this man is so prepared that you just can't win, you know? Um, but the thing that really got me, and I was thinking about this as, you know, I, when I did that first review, was, uh, or thoughts video, I'm sorry, the fact that The Dark Knight Rises just dropped a couple months back, and then here's a couple months later, they released this, and this was supposedly, not this version, but the book was supposedly what inspired Frank, I'm um, sorry, Christopher Nolan to do his take. Now, there are little things I could say that were inspired, and I can see it immediately, you know, the Tumblr, it's a tank. It's kind of a fast-moving tank from this. Um, the idea in The Dark Knight Rises that Batman quit for some reason and then, you know, has to come back into the game. Okay, fine. Some of the dialogue, you know? Okay, I'll give him that. Especially when uh, Alfred tells Bruce that the leader of the mutants is in his prime and, you know, he'll kill you. Um things like that I'll give them props and I'll say you know I can see where you were inspired or where you lifted or whatever you want to say you want to call it but what I have to point out though is the difference in the attitude of the versions of Batman you know and I do realize like I said before the Nolan films are their own thing you know you can tell this is what Christopher Nolan and his brother did when they played with their Batman toys they dumbed down everything because for whatever reason they just didn't get how things worked Whereas Bruce Tim and all of those guys, they trim the fat on the dumb shit, you know, the episodic shit that just made for good sales as far as comics go. They got rid of all that shit and they kind of beefed up the parts that worked and added in things to keep all of the, the continuity and all the ideas that work together. And I dig that. I dig that so much more than the quote-unquote forced realism because telling me that in real life there is like there's no such thing as a guy with the drive like unstoppable drive to keep him going no matter what is bullshit because that's all you you would need to make this a reality I mean you could put even if he had on a suit that was made of rags his drive is what makes him so unbeatable. So he would train and train and train, and he'd just be so driven that you couldn't just beat him easily. Um, now you top, uh, you add to that the fact that you know Wayne has all this money, and you know he does have all that crazy training, and he did go all over the world and learn all these different things, and you know add the detective aspects to him. And I mean, this is what Batman is all about. And you can't dumb that shit down and then try to tell us that it's a good film. So you know. I get it. That's that world. This is this world. And this is more like what we know of bats, you know? Um, the art style, as they always do, these guys took Frank Miller's style, which, you know, in this book was actually pretty good. And they added superb knowledge of anatomy and, you know, superb lighting and, 
you know, really nicely done character design that kind of streamlines and, you know, lifts the, uh, the elements from Miller's work and, you know, kind of makes it a, 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 new, a retro, uh, how do I put it? Almost like it, it just gives this old work new life without forgetting its roots. You know, and you hear a lot of people say stuff like that, but I mean, you can clearly see that this was a story written in the 80s. Because, you know, for a future, a post apocalyptic future, they're still driving big ass Lincolns and Vegas and ugly ass, you know, boats of cars. Um, it's not very futuristic past that. They're speaking in weird slang that sounds like shit that people were saying in like the 80s and the early 90s. Um, the idea of spikes and chains and shit like that is what a gang runs around in in this show, you know, or in this movie. So, you know, you kind of get a, a feel for what the period is that this film is supposed to represent. And as usual, this art team is top notch. They know their shit. They do everything is on point. Um, the music. The music is awesome. The music almost feels like... Uh, something out of a uh, what's the guy's name he's one of my favorite directors and I can't believe I'm drawing a blank um, John Carpenter film it feels like Escape from New York or uh, it, it, it feels like Big Trouble in Little China without the Chinese aspects to it but all the synth if you ever heard of the group Zombie Z -O -M -B -I, they kind of have this sound that's inspired by John Carpenter films if you ever saw, um, not Death Proof, but uh, Planet Terror, that was um, inspired, the music was inspired by John Carpenter films. These heavy synth and, uh, you know, uh, it's just a lot of keyboard and synth and a lot of uh, digital sounds, you know what I'm saying? And uh, actually, I guess back then, were the, were the analog sounds? I don't know, but it has that old school, almost new wave well, new wave elements in there. Um, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. It's perfect. And then when Batman shows up, he has this theme that works like on every level for the return of this character, this great character. You know, even though he's force fed to us, great character. Um, the uh, voice acting, the voice acting is on point as always. There's really not much to complain about, not much to ask for. Um, I really have no complaints, you know? The, if anything, the only complaint I have with these DC animated films is that they don't get one guy to voice, or one person to voice some of the lesser characters, you know? Because it is kind of weird hearing so many different versions of Batman's voice. But uh, I do enjoy Peter Weller's Batman. It's really good, especially since he's an older Batman. What is he, 55 in this movie? Um, it's awesome. He sounds the part. He sounds very intelligent, very calculating, and he also sounds very powerful. And at times, he sounds so intimidating that regardless of what kind of costume Batman's wearing, with that cape shrouded over him, if he was to come up to you like out of the blue in any way, shape, or form, just appear in a room and talk to you in that kind of tone, I think whatever it is he wanted, you would give it to him. Um, I can't really speak for too many of the other characters because I, I mean, I might know some of the voice actors from, you know, seeing them in other stuff, but in this, they were so much, they were so into being the character that you forget who it is that was playing each of these, you know, different parts. Um, and that's about, you know, 95% of the cast. Um, I enjoyed, uh, what was I going to say? I enjoyed the, uh, the actual uh, choreography and all that was really good. The fighting was, like, spot on. It was really good. I'm, I was like, whoa, okay. Um, the uh, direction, I needed to point that out. Direction as far as, you know. The, the the not just the style but the uh, the actual uh, you know pe the, the the way things were framed the way things were shot what we got to see and how we got to see it was superbly done there were certain things done 
in such a, uh, I don't know, such a, 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 a very straightforward, uh, stark, contrasty film noir style. And I, I know a lot of people mix these things up. They think, um, they think uh, um, film noir, it describes that whole entire style and not just the, uh, you know, not just the, the, the look or the lighting, you know? Um, I, when I say film noir, I, I should specify I'm talking the film noir lighting. Um, it's just well done. There's not much else that can be said. <laughs> um, the uh, character designs, I said they were perfect. Spot on. You knew whose style it was they were imitating. There's not much else that you can ask for. Um, this is, a, this is one of those rare times that you got a 10 out of 10. The only gripe I have with this entire, you know, movie, and the fact that it's two parts, and, you know, it's that it's Batman, you know? And there are good stories, and this was one of the good stories that needed to be put to animation, so I guess this isn't a gripe. This is one of those things where I just wish that the DC um, animated uh, staff or universe staff would turn around and look at other stories you know give us a justice league international um movie that'd be awesome get us some hilarity or something you know give us a flash movie please you know um give us a a, a green arrow movie like a full-on green arrow movie i would love that you know dig into into the crates and give us other stuff like a like a um i don't know like a full-on uh jsa film you know or um the reign of the supermen or something like that you know um just do something besides batman that's my only gripe you know batman has a lot of good stories but they're about to run they're running the well dry because they've done just about all the good batman stories except for nightfall the long halloween uh dark victory and you know those are coming you know so um all in all this is one of those that you got to see you know, I, 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 I've told you guys before that, you know, I see Batman as a force fed character and this is just being fair because, you know, there are other characters out there, but DC banks so much on Batman that if it, it feels like they've kind of given him a lot of, uh, convenient, uh, abilities and convenience in his stories, you know, so that if he, if he just appears safe from harm you know out of that burning building no one questions how he did it because he's batman you know what i mean whereas you know there should be some level of uh you know danger and because he's old in this film you do feel like wow he could die you know you actually see that and i like that and i mean granted this is a like over what almost 20 years old if not more, um, it's one of those films that I, f I wish that uh, it was uh, the, the same attention that was used in, you know, telling this story. I wish that kind of attention to detail was still being used, you know, in uh, today's films. So, um, I don't know. This is definitely worth it. Check it out. I can't say enough good stuff about it. I'm going to watch it again. Um, I need to find the soundtrack because uh, the stuff is am uh, amazing. I think Christopher Drake did the music for it. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, Christopher Drake did the music. Um, he's one of the people who did some of the music in Batman Beyond and some of the other uh, animated films. Um, just, just go see this. You know, go see it so you can see what Batman's really about. Um, and as for the one person who gave me a uh, a little note on my <laughs> a little note on my my thoughts a bit about this, saying that I don't know Batman. You know, I guess <laughs> whatever you say, homie. I know this is worth checking out for those who know and for those who don't know. So. I don't know, you know, and considering you got zero views on your page and all you do is troll around and tell people 
that they're inferior to you and your supreme in intellect. I don't know what to tell you. So anyway, folks, um, here's a little bit of information for you that you will enjoy if you enjoy Batman. If you enjoy seeing the old timers kind of pop back up and do things, or if you just enjoy the DC Universe in general, it fits and it works really well. You know, it's really well done. I'm Strident. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'll talk to you later. Peace.